All right. I'm going to continue on this uh, these segments. I thought that I could just put it in one, but I, the spirit is with me right now, and I just got to break it down. Listen, I firmly believe, and I'm speaking this to someone, 2013 is going to be your summer of breakthroughs, revelations, and clarity. You have to stay the course. But that good old devil is going to give you a run for your money. It's going to challenge the way you think and it's going to try to convince you that your decision making is not what it should be. That is why it's so important to be able to grow in spirit and learn to embrace your discernment. I am so sick and tired of watching you, my queens, broken. My kings lost. Now, before I could even speak on this, I too had to come through the storm. And I'm on the other side of it. So I'm going to help you have see signs that you have been verbalized spiritually and emotionally. You got to understand something. Your destiny and your legacy is depending on that. If you are in a commitment, relationship, or alliance, Here's how you know that you are in the midst of being burglarized and it is robbing your spirit. Number 10. You're starting to embrace yourself. You're starting to do the work. You're starting to walk in faith, not by sight. And as you're starting to evolve, your connections that should be uplifting you, you find your most resistance. Number nine, when you make a sound decision and you want to validate that through your connections, they shoot you down. They try to keep you in a controlled mindset. Oh, you think you've grown? You don't need me? Who are you to think for yourself? Or the big one? You acting out of your race? That's a red flag right there, y'all. You're being verbalized. You've been raped. Your spirit is trying to... They're trying to rape you of your, of your self-worth and your confidence. So they're attacking you. Number eight. These people are very savvy when it comes to spirituality. And they use this as a tool to manipulate, deceive, and downright break you down oh you want to so you also you don't want to do this no more but we got together that way you know oh that, that's messed up and then they throw a passage at you so that automatically goes to your heart because all you want to do is be happy you're being burglarized Number seven, when you've made a choice and a commitment to yourself, instead of trying to give you tools to enhance your direction, they sabotage it. They embarrass you. They downright disrespect you. 
you're being burglarized. Number six. <laughs> I think we've all been here. They convince you that you are nothing without them. In actuality, what they're telling you is this. You got to play your part, play your position. You ain't thinking straight. There go that control again. Tearing down that self esteem, trying to convince you that your worth is not precious. Oh, <laughs> they're wrong. They're wrong. Okay, I'm going to get hot on this one. Number five. When you are in fellowship with these people, you're only in fellowship with them at night. Behind closed doors. They don't honor you out in public. Red flag. Number four. You make mis you make mis uh, you make excuses for them. See, that's how that manipulation goes into play. See, it is your responsibility to govern your life, no one else's. So if you can't grow with them, why are they there? <laughs> why are they there? Like you owe them something. Y'all owe them nothing. I'm a firm believer of this, y'all. person does not give respect to you as you give to them. That's a telltale sign. They, they don't respect you. And if they don't respect you, they don't love you. Because love does not hurt. And actually, <laughs> it's very cowardice. Because they don't have the tools or the developmental skills to reciprocate that what is deserved. Number two, they use the things that you value against you. So you got to understand something. When a person is growing, the things that serve no purpose as a means to attack them on an emotional sense, they will they will go behind you, your direction, and they will try to persuade your environment. Look at it this way. You know how unfortunately we live in a society where terrorism exists. So what do terrorists do? They use shock and awe to sway your mindset so you will conform into their belief structure. You stay true to you. If it don't feel right, it ain't right. I know I'm talking to somebody. Number two. There's no future. As I said before, one night stands and debauchery is done by a day-by-day -day basis. They're not going to tell you what they're planning on doing tomorrow because they don't want you to know. Why? Because they don't know. But misery loves company. Don't fall for that, y'all. Love yourself. Number one. After they have burglarized your self-worth, 
they have emotionally raped and privileged your self-esteem and they have broken you down they always keep you in a position that is always compromised you got somebody in your life and, and they're like well you know what when I see you I want you to wear this I want you to do that I need you to do this and it benefits them huh. you being burglarized I'm gonna tell you something y'all enough is enough look within your heart I do one better look in your past because the seeds that you planted yesterday or in the past is your reality today and if you were not doing what you needed to do such as respecting yourself protecting your boundaries making sure that you have sound mind and body you will never reap respect you won't but let me tell you how our God because he's a jealous but loving God see you don't play with him the first thing that he does is he will bring people in your life to say hey come on now come on now come on now what you doing what you doing now that's where that discernment comes in because you should be able it should feel like a natural flow of heal because anybody that's for you ain't gonna tear you down they're not gonna do that and they're gonna tell you what you need to hear not what you wanna hear let's look at it on a different perspective you know how many times you see that man sitting on that park bench he broke down well he didn't get there overnight there was choices made in his past and that was his reality but guess what even if you homeless you have a choice to remain homeless because there's shelters out there there are outreaches out there you can change your life if you choose to but you know that thief yeah that person they don't want you to see that because it's so broken that once you start to heal yourself which means to fall back they get scared sometimes they might even get violent because now it's all or nothing so they will use whatever tactic to keep you suppressed my kings my queens don't fall for that okey dope crap don't do that love don't hurt love don't hurt love yourself get up out of there because if you don't here's a prime example if you guys have not seen this movie it came out some time ago that uh td jakes had put out called woman thou art loosed and it is the seven day th the seven day one which is great but there was another one before that and I can't think of the actress name but the the girl that played and set it off the mother um well she plays a role as a broken she was a broken vessel and it started from her childhood and the choices that she made impacted her future I'm not gonna go into it in depth because I would like you guys to check it out but you see how those seeds were planted and how it even her extensions her family but the point I want to make was 
how it impacted her mom. Because her mother wasn't loving herself. Her mother settled. And so you know a snake will look at you eyeball to eyeball. But, but, but even before a, snake, before a snake will bite you, it'll give you a choice to walk away, leave it be, or you keep coming with me. And when you do, I'm going to bite you. And broke self spring, broke that self esteem, that self worth, and her life course was altered. Was altered. Don't settle for the stuff that you don't deserve. Don't do that. Do not do that. Listen. Everybody wants love and companionship and devotion but it cannot manifest until you plant them seeds within yourself you have to love yourself first and that will attract the love that is required my queens we put this out here because some of y'all are still not willing to see what is going on. If you don't like your life the way it is, if you turn around looking at what you see on TV as a template of how you're supposed to live your life, or you're allowing what is being played in, in radio to influence you, some of you guys are so lost, the music that is being played is disrespecting you, but because it's got a beat, you right out there, you right out there celebrating, you condoning it. A queen should always sit high, not squat low. Don't do that. Because that, let me tell you something. See, the Bible says, when a man seeks a wife, it is good. It is a man's responsibility to seek you out. That is why you do not have the peace and harmony of a, a responsible relationship because it's not yoked. Every time you turn around and go out there trying, because see, society has already told you, uh, I don't need a man. Wrong. Wrong. That's, uh, that's the biggest illusion out there. That's the big lie. I don't need him. Maybe he might not need him. Because he ain't the one that's supposed to be there. And what happens sometimes? See, my Lord Jesus Christ. What he will do, he sees you stumbling. He sees you scraping your knee he will send you somebody to have the tools to uplift your life but what do some of you do instead of embracing that change and he's saying come on with me baby come on baby that ain't the way baby come grow with me baby you look at him as weak. And what happens is, he goes. And, the, and you go through a cycle of bums that all they want to do is treat you like, like six flags. You just arrive. You just something to do. But guess what? You'll never be their wives. You that stick person, you that stick man, you riding in the passenger seat, and they driving your life straight down to hell. Because guess what? You allowed that into your life. But you have to empower yourself by first placing boundaries. If you don't believe me, check this out. If you're in a relationship right now and it's very messed up, 
I ain't talking about stagnant because relationships will have peaks and valleys. But if you know that it feels like you're waiting for a bus that's not going anywhere or it's not coming, you put your boots on. You put your boots on. And you say, listen, I care about you. I love you. What is your intentions with me? What is your game plan with me? If they can't turn around and respond back right there and show in action, that's what. There is no game plan. You plan, you plan a position. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because what you fail to realize is the man that is supposed to be there to massage your temples, to rub your feet, to kiss behind your neck, to look passionately in your eyes. See, a real man will always be able to see potential that you have not reached. He sees your virtue. He sees it. But if you do not embrace yourself to allow yourself to heal, if your life is nothing but a turnstile of relationships, Sweetie, you can't go through life saying, oh, good, there's no good men. You made bad choices. Look at the common denominator between all these people that had access to you. And I guarantee you, there will be one that was the exception of the rule. But because your pride and ego and arrogance blocked your judgment you let your blessing slip away you see it in the media you see it in the movies you see it in the rape in a, and, and they sing about it because it's real but see that devil <laughs> that devil mama he will send you I'm talking to somebody I know See, when you in that, that, that cold bed of lust and longing, and you say, you know, I just want someone. And here's the funny thing. As I mentioned before, you know how they say, be careful what you ask for because you just might get it? Because prayers must go up before they can come down. Well, see, that devil... He's sitting up in there like, oh, that's what you want? You want a fine brother that got his, got his head on straight, and he's got his financial aspects on point, and you envision yourself with that person. But guess what? They didn't already figured you out from the jump because you're not equally yoked with this person. You're not equally yoked with this person because there's no growth potential. When you hear people, when you hear people say, oh, "Well, you know what? Really, I just want somebody to take care of me." Come on now, you ain't nobody's kid. But you do, and it is your responsibility to spiritually connect with that inner child within you. That is your responsibility, because you know what? You know what the reality of a kept woman is or a kept man, you're enabled. Basically, you are a slave. How many times have you seen it from the outside and you, you see somebody, they got the car, they got the clothes, they got the career, but they got no desire to go home because that's their prison. They're trying to build and live a life through someone else's merits because they didn't grow together. They weren't yoked. They weren't. Therefore, you are being robbed. Stop disrespecting yourself. Because if it is not balanced, anything that is not balanced will fall apart. Because there's no structure there. 
if it seems like you just giving, 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 and giving, and giving, and you only getting back crumbs, they do not respect you. If you feel like, and I'm a, I know I'm talking to somebody, if you feel, if you find yourself spending more time, <laughs> more time in the darkness, or looking in the ceiling, or looking at the floor, or doing things that you know you should not be doing. You are being robbed. And I'm going to bring this last part home because I didn't want to go this far. But I'm so sick and tired of seeing my queens and kings fall for the okie doke. Own yourself. Own your dreams. It is your responsibility to define your legacy. It is. It is. It is. Because the, the things that you do in the past affect your tomorrow. And, it, man, I, I, I see it all the time. And I'm like, man, you know, we, I, I pray for these people because they don't see the blessings that they are entitled to have. And the sad part about it is this. Ladies, kings, if you are sharing or giving intimacy that you should give to your wife or husband, first of all, that will never give you a ring or a relationship. You are no, what you're doing is, you're losing your spiritual essence each time you indulge. And what will happen if you do not wake up? You will become the things that you despise. Because every time that you, you engage in, in sexual connection, a part of them is joined with you. Please respect yourself. Well, I went way before my time. But you know, I mean, look, listen. Society is not going. Society is not going to tell you what you need to know. It's not. They want you to be deaf, dumb, and blind, be sheep, and and keep it moving. Follow your heart. Call on God. Because whatever you're going through, no matter how bad you think it is, it will pass. But it cannot pass until you start respecting yourself. And watch what happens. When you start to truly embrace where, where your life is supposed to take you, two things will happen. You might see someone that you passed long ago and didn't understand why they were there. They were there because God put them in. But while you're in that spiritual storm, I want you to keep the faith. Respect yourself first. Don't leave that up to someone else to do. And by all means, keep your boundaries together because if you don't, your life will be ransacked. Your self-esteem and self-worth will be redefined through someone else's agenda. So don't claim that. If you're a queen, act like it. Carry yourself that way. And if they're worth it, they'll do what is required. First, by allowing you to heal. God loves you. He's praying for you. You know I am. Thank you. Hit me up if you have any questions, concerns, and always put God first in everything you do.